Good afternoon, everyone. I really am glad you're here with me today. I looked and saw uh, several names there. Hi, Terry. Uh, hi, Jackie. Hi, Karen. Uh, hi, Ricky. Uh, it's good to have you here today. Busy times, uh, interesting times, scary times. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we begin with prayer this uh, afternoon. Kind and merciful Father, we approach your throne of grace in the name of Jesus, praying to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I think a lot of us thought that this might be uh, for the short haul. It might be just a couple of weeks. I know when I began, Lord, I thought we'd be back in church maybe in three or four weeks. Uh, now, as of yesterday, Governor Inslee uh, extended the stay-at-home order, which includes churches, until May, f May 4th. And I suspect that's going to keep going for uh, some time. I pray, Lord, for this long haul, uh, that you would enable us to, you would strengthen us for the long haul, for uh, waiting patiently, Lord. We can't be patient in of ourselves. We try and we miserably fail, but uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, joy. And so we pray once again that you would fill us with an extraordinary, great measure of your Spirit today and throughout this week, that that patience that comes from as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, meaning it's produced by the Holy Fruit, uh, by the Holy Spirit in us as a fruit, that that patience would be real in our life, that we would be patient with each other at home. I know uh, cabin fever can set in and we can get a little testy with each other, uh, maybe a little bit short-tempered. <clears throat> Father, give us that love for each other by your Spirit. Give us that peace that passes all understanding. Give us the <clears throat> joy of the Lord. And Father, I pray that the, the fruit of, the, of patience would bloom in our life, would blossom, would come to maturation in our life, Lord. That means also we need uh, uh, your help in so many ways, in finances, Lord, in food on our table, in... Uh, prescriptions in everyday uh, needs like cleaning supplies and toilet paper and paper towels and and then the the uh, staples of bread and milk and cereal and uh, meat on our table father we need so much in these days we have been such a wealthy nation and you have uh, allowed us to be brought to our homes uh, you have allowed us to be brought to our knees lord and so prepare us for the long haul. And at the same time, we pray that this would not last long, that you would speak that peace into this pandemic, that you would bring it quickly to a close. But Father, if this is going to last a month, two months, three months, uh, there's some predictions that might last as long as September, October. Those are unverified, but no one knows, Lord. Only you do. And so do everything in, a, in us, Lord, to, pre to prepare us to stay at home, to deal with the psychology of this, the emotional stress. There's a tremendous stress on all, on all of our lives. And some, some of us have other stresses on top of that, stresses of health, stresses of finances to begin with, stresses of shattered relationships. We have so many things that were already causing uh, hardship and distress and stress. And so, Father, you restore our soul. You be our, psycho our psychologist, Lord. You put us back together again. You keep us emotionally stable. May we d be doing things like just getting quiet, being quiet, not trying to be busy all the time. As Americans, we feel guilty if we're not working every minute of the day. But Father, maybe you have made us lie down in green pastures and maybe you have made us lie down in our own homes. Help us to learn to be still. Help us uh, to learn to wonder at the grandeur of creation. Maybe stepping out outside at night on a clear day and once again seeing the magnificence of the stars and the magnificence of who you are, the one through whom all things were created, the one in whom all things hold together. Right now you're holding the whole creation together by the power of your word. Father, we entrust these coming days and maybe coming months 
into your hands. We ask that you would prepare us for the long haul. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, it's really nice to have you with us uh, today. Let's pray together that uh, God would strengthen each other, that you pray for me, I'll pray for all of you. Uh, pray for each other, that we would be strengthened. Uh, make sure you stay in contact with each other on the phone, uh, over Facebook, over uh, video chat, whether it's over the uh, over Skype or over uh, Facebook uh, Messenger, you can uh, chat with people. We fre frequently now chat with our daughter in Gig Harbor. Uh, as she's a nurse, she potentially is exposed to this, so she can't come over right now. So uh, please pray for each other and pray for me. Uh, just one other uh, announcement. This Sunday, we're going to be celebrating communion together. And so if you could prepare whatever beverage you have, if you don't have grape, ju grape juice, don't run out and get grape juice. You can use orange juice, apple juice, uh, Coca-Cola, lemon, lime, Sprite, water, tea, tea. Um, you know, in Japan, green tea makes makes all the sense, and a little rice. Um, and whatever bread you have, even rice, uh, crackers, Ritz bits, whatever you have, prepare that ahead of time, and then we'll do our customary uh, communion at the end of our service on Sunday. It begins at, a, at 11. We'll probably go a little uh, go somewhat after 11 or afternoon, probably to 12.15 or so. Depends on how long the Holy Spirit has me preach. So uh, it's a joy to be uh, doing this every day and to be with you on Sundays. Um, I miss you all, and I love you all. So today we're going to be looking at Psalm 8, and it's a wonderful song. It's a song, Psalm of Praise, and in the uh, initial, let me actually read it to you, in the initial part of the psalm it says, uh, the Lord's glory and man's dignity is, is the heading that I get in my Bible, but actually part of the psalm says, for the choir director on the Giddeth, a psalm of David, we don't know what on the giddeth, giddeth me means, but in every psalm that has that word, it's a psalm of praise, a psalm of celebration. So it might have been a musical term that meant uh, a very lively musical term. That's why I tried to have live, lively music at the beginning. But it's, it's a term that expresses that joyful celebration of who God is. So let's take a look at the, at the psalm together. I'm going to read it first through. O Lord, our, our Lord... How majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. Because of your adversaries, to make the enemy and the revenge, revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him rule over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the fields. The birds of the heaven and the fish of the sea, whatever passes, through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our, our Lord, O Lord, our, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So we begin back, begin at the beginning again. I love this picture of the, of the, one of the, uh, I think it's a nebula. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. So that word Lord is again capitalized, and it's from Exodus 3, 4, where um, Moses says, I don't know your name, to God, when God is asking him to deliver them from Egypt. And he says, I don't know your name. And God says, tell him I am sent you. Tell him I am who I am sent you, meaning the one who contains life in himself. He doesn't need anyone from outside of himself uh, to su supply him life. And it's getting at that he is an eternal being uh, living forever. Uh, with the ability of life in himself. And also, it's a few verses later, then he says he likens that word, I am, and that verb, I am, to the Lord. Uh, and I won't go into the whole thing, but essentially, the, the name there is Yahweh, for which the rabbis would read over um, the word Lord, Adonai, over it. Um, so, O Lord, Yahweh, our Lord, 
meaning he's, he's our master, he's our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth? I had it all set up, but let me go here. The word majestic means, um, it means literally to uh, a wide, literally means wide or large. And so in, when it's used figuratively, it's talking about how wide God is, how large he is, how majestic he is. Uh, how majestic is your name in all the earth? Uh, there's no other name like, like uh, Jesus. There's no other name like Yahweh in all the earth. His name is far grander and far greater and far wider than any name we can even imagine. Who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. And so Hebrew culture thought of the heavens as uh, three heavens. There was the heavens that was the abode of the birds, the sky. And then there was a second heaven, that was the first heaven. Then there was a second heaven, which was the, scar the stars and the galaxies and, and the universe. And then the third heaven is that heaven where God dwells, where the hope of heaven uh, is that we will be with him in that heaven one day. So when he says, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens, he's talking about that first heaven, the, the abode of the birds. And above that is displayed the splendor of the stars, the moon, the sun, uh, the galaxies, the quasars, um, and so on. I love looking at that. Um, it's so beautiful what, what God has made. It's hard for us to really get a picture of it anymore because we have so much light pollution in our neighborhoods. I go outside here and you might be able to pick out the Big Dipper. We can see Orion and Cassiopeia uh, and so on. Maybe Cygnus the Swan in the sky. Um, we can see the North Star. But beyond that, it's it's pretty dim. Once in a while, we'll be able to see Jupiter and Venus, Saturn in the skies. Um, but um, for the most part, you can't see that grandeur. One time when I was in high school, I went on with my chemistry teacher who worked as a part-time ranger during the summer. We went over to a, a Hanapakosh where he uh, was a ranger and he took us out at night uh, out onto a very, very dark road on the west side of Mount Rainier uh, where there was no light pollution. And the grandeur, it was during a meteor, meteor shower, and the grandeur was just incredible. It was awe-inspiring to think that God created everything we can see and beyond this vastness of our universe. And then it goes on and it says, from the, mouths, from the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy in the revengeful seas. These are strange words to me. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. So from their mouths, you have established strength. Um, if you go over to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 21, verse 16, Jesus said to him, uh, do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth, mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. And so it's a little bit different. And the reason why is Jesus is quoting from the Septuagint here, uh, not from the Hebrew Masoretic text or the Hebrew text. And so we see that uh, strength. What it's getting at is little, little children and, and babies have this wonder about everything in their life. They're always asking, what's that? Why? Uh, why is the sky blue? Be and my answer was always, because it reflects the color of the sea. And why is the ocean blue? Because it reflects the color of the sky. It wasn't a very satisfactory answer to my daughters. but um, So you, you have this strength in, in little children, in their ability to just believe and stand in wonder at the newness of creation all around them. You take them on a hike out into an old growth forest and they're just astounded and there's strength in their wonder that comes out of their mouth and it comes out as, as praise of the one who created all, everything. And, be, and he's done this because of your adversaries, because of God's adversaries, to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. What he's getting at is even the adversaries of God and the enemies, when they see a baby, everybody goes, oh, isn't that baby cute? Or isn't that a wonder that they're seeing the world through such eyes of wonder and amazement? Um, it moves on and it says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, 
Ooh, did you see that shooting star just pass by? I love it. Um, when I consider your heavens, again, when you can go out on the east, uh, west side, or east side it was, I said the west side, the east side of Mount Rainier, and get out on one of those dark arms of the mountain, on one of those forest roads, and see heaven, the heavens, the Milky Way, spread out in its uh, grandeur. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fing fingers, it's the small, delicate handiwork of his fingers, as, as one version uh, I heard. The small, delicate handiwork of his fingers. The universe is enormously large. If you go, uh, one light year is 108, or one uh, light, how do I say it? Light travels 186,000 186, miles in one second. In one year, that amounts to about 6 trillion miles, which is more than I can uh, fathom. And the closest star is about, what, 4.2? I don't remember exactly what it is, about 4 light years away. So get that, that's 24 trillion miles away. Uh, it's, it's enormous. And that's the closest star. That's just in our galaxy. And then there, our galaxy uh, exists within a supercluster of galaxies or in a cluster of galaxies, and that cluster of galaxies exists within a supercluster of galaxies, which, which exists uh, amid a whole bunch of supercluster clusters of galaxies, as far as the eye can see, as far as our tele telescopes can see. We're getting better, at, better, better and better at seeing deep space, and it's amazing that uh, it says in, in the Psalms that, or in Isaiah actually, uh, that the stars, the, the expanse of the heavens can be measured by the width of God's hand. We talk about how wide God is, how large he is, how majestic he is. Who can consider how, how enormous our God is, how majestic he is? When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. He put this, the moon there to light, light the night and the stars to light our night. And the beauty to remind us of who he is. Full moon on a, on a beautiful night with the stars out. Man, it can take your breath away. Or that harvest moon when it comes just above the horizon and you get that large gold moon. It's, it's so beautiful. And it speaks of God's glory. All of creation is singing out God's glory. I go out in the springtime and I hear, I, I can hear, I can see the flowers singing his glory. The, the leaves on the trees dancing in the winds, in the wind, dancing uh, in uh, praise to the one who created them. Uh, all through creation, the birds with their bird song singing the praises to God. Uh, who gave birds their song? Yahweh did. Jesus did. Through him, all things were created. So when you hear birds singing, you're, her, you're hearing birds, uh, God's song. You're hearing the song that God gave to each bird. I love to hear uh, American crown sparrows. They have this wonderful song. They, they are usually down at Lions Park. Um, a lot of them are down there. Can't hear it right now because Lions Park is closed. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. So when you think of the vastness of the universe and its grandeur and majesty, and here we are on this little teeny planet, uh, as many of uh, as there are stars out there, they, astronomers believe that there are equally even a larger number of planets out there. And so we are, as I think it was Bill Nye, the, the science guy, said, you know, we're a little speck on a speck and a speck on a speck. And he was uh, kind of making fun of this idea that, that human beings have any uh, uh, importance to us that we're not special in any way. But get this, what is man that you have, that you take thought of him? And the son of man that you care for him? I think that's messian messianic there, speaking of, of uh, Jesus, the coming uh, Messiah, the son of man that you care for him. What, is, what are human beings that you take thought of us? In the vastness of creation, we're just these little specks on a speck of a planet. And yet you have made us a little lower than God. This uh, heralds 
heralds back to um, Genesis chapter 1. So we'll take a look at that, Genesis chapter 1. Um, here we go. You, you make him to rule over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the fields. And so you have this, um, let me go back to 4 again. You have made him a little lower than God, and you have, you crown him with glory and majesty. And let me go ahead and read 5 again. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and ox, oxen, and also the beasts of the field. And then we come to Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. There we go. We've been made a little lower than God. We've been made in the image of God. That's a tremendous idea. Uh, years ago, I made a. I was st studying Genesis chapter 1. And when it says you've been made in the image of God, all we know at that point in Genesis 1, nothing else had been written yet, uh, was that who God was by how he's described as a creator. And so I made up this chart. Um, let me see if you can see it. I was going to put it on, but I didn't have time. Um, it's, it's a chart of all the verbs that describe what God does in Genesis chapter 1. And ironically, being made in his image, we share every one of those traits. Uh, so to say, God spoke, he's given us the ability to speak. To see, and it's, it's the idea of he saw that it was good. To, so to perceive things that are beautiful and good. Do not, do not we perceive both with our ears and with our eyes things that are good? Wonderful music, beautiful music, a beautiful painting, a beautiful sunrise, the wonder of flowers, uh, the beauty of, of bird song, and so on. The word be, that, that uh, occurs six times. And uh, just to be, we um, are aware that we exist. I don't think my dog, my dog Jock, knows that he exists. He knows that he's hungry. He knows that he likes to be pet petted. But I don't think he contemplates himself. He contemplates food. He contemplates all those other things. The word separate, God separated uh, the d darkness from the light. He separated the wa uh, water from the dry land. And we're constant, constantly uh, separating things. We categorize things as human beings. I don't see animals doing a lot of uh, categorization, if you will. We have dictionaries. We have uh, encyclopedias. We, we categorize in all kinds of ways. Uh, he calls things. He names things. We uh, were called to name the animals, and we, we have these big dictionaries in which we called things names. That's part of the wonder of a, of a little child uh, growing up as learning the names of everything. He makes things. Uh, God uh, talks about he made the heavens and so on. We make things. Jesus was a carpenter. He made uh, furniture, probably, uh, tables and chairs and um, so on. Uh, I love to work with wood. I, I don't like to work with metal. I don't like those kinds of power tools. But I love to work with wood and uh, make beautiful things out of wood. We make things in uh, various ways. We make, uh, I know uh, Marilyn Yuri uh, knits uh, and sews. Uh, my sister-in-law, Patty, she knits. Marilyn Yuri sews. We, we make things. Probably all of you have something that you're good at making. The other day I made bread for the first time. We make things. Um, we create things. That's more with the idea of this um, creative spark in us, if you will, that we create paintings and music and art and theater, and uh, we write books, creative books, and so on. We create things. I, I'm not going to read through all of them, but the idea is we have been made and let us make man in our image. And so having been made a little lower than God, We've been made in, in God's image according to our likeness. And I think that's, some people deny this, but I, I think that's certainly speaking of the Trinity. And let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. We call this the imago Deo, which is um, this, how do I say it? In the original creation, we had this dignity created into us. After the fall, we lost that image, and then we were created in the image of, of Adam, of fallen Adam. But now we are being recreated into the image of Jesus Christ, so that one day when we see him, we will be like him. Amazing. 
It goes on, it says, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So you make him to rule over the wor works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. That word rule is to have dominion. So at the same time I made that chart up, this is probably 20 years ago, a long time ago. I made up a uh, kind of a study of all the occurrence of this word to have dominion. It's very interesting that prior to the fall, it's a word that's used twice of their dominion over creation. And it didn't mean the rule in the sense of a negative term. It was to rule over in the sense of taking care of creation, taking care of the animals, taking care of the planet. He's entrusted to it to us to uh, rule over it with that benevolent care, just as Jesus rules over us with benevolent care. After the fall, the term takes on a very, very uh, negative uh, a tone to it, that kings rule over, sometimes viciously over their subjects. They tax them more than they should, and, and uh, uh, God has foreign nations come and rule over Israel when they are in sin and uh, idolatry. After the, after the fall, as far as I know, there is no really positive use of this word again. And so there is this fallenness to our dominion, to our rule over creation now. We more rape the creation than care for it. Um, and so we get um, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where these verses are quoted. And let me read those. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. This is Jesus. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. Well, I look forward to that day when there will be no more death. We all live in this constant kind of this shadow of death that hangs over us. This possibility and the knowledge that one day we all are going to die. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is, he is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. So there is a day coming when everything won't be put under our feet. We blew it. But as Jesus is the perfect human being, all things, the dominion will be returned to Jesus completely. And when that happens, even death will come and be destroyed. And when that happens, then Jesus will, will return it in the mystery of the Trinity to God the Father. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everything will be put in subjection under him. So again, you make him to rule over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. Not under our feet, but under the feet of Jesus. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field the birds of the heaven and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the sea, this dominion we've lost. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Notice what the psalm begins with. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then it concludes with, O oh Lord, our, our Lord. I don't know why I'm having trouble pronouncing that today, but O oh Lord, our our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Contemplate uh, this psalm. This is a psalm to bring out and read when you're down in the mouth, remembering that the vastness of creation is a small, delicate handiwork of his fingers, that the vastness of the universe can be measured by the expanse of his hand. He is a great and powerful God, and he has thought of us. He has thought of us to the extent that he has given us Jesus Christ, his, his son, the son of man, who came not to condemn us, but to save the world. He came to offer us the gift of eternal life, but for the believing. Jesus says, I am the res resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, she who believes in me, Though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? What a poignant question. 
He says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am that name, Yahweh. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says that in his own being, he is the resurrection and the life. He is the life. In other words, that he has the power of life within himself. And he has the power of resurrection to resurrect us one day. Those words give me great hope in the middle of my own struggle with cancer. Uh, one day I will be no, no longer able to praise him. But I look forward to the day when he will raise me with a brand new body. I know that the moment I die, the moment I take this last breath, I will be absent from the body and home with the Lord. So I will be home with him. But we wait for that day when all creation will be healed, when this present earth and the present heavens will be destroyed by fire, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And we will have no more sin in our life. And we will all be best friends, all those little petty, petty differences and the not-so-petty differences put aside. Oh, we long for that day. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Thank you for uh, joining me today. Um, I love this psalm. Take time to ponder it, to meditate on it, to remember it, to praise God for who he is. If he has the power to create the heavens in their vastness, he also has the power to bring this pandemic to an end. So let's cry out to him with one voice. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring this pandemic to an end, Lord. Speak peace, peace to you, peace to this pandemic, peace to the world. Let's close in prayer. Father, I just uh, thank you for the psalm. I thank you for, uh, it's a psalm of David, it's attributed to David. I thank you for the wonder that it must have been to live back then when there was no light pollution whatsoever. And just the beauty of the heavens, Lord. The beauty of, of an untouched earth where old growth forests still stood. Where the newness of creation still sang out your glory. Father, we have made this earth old and tired. The creation groans. And we groan with it. We groan for a new day when there will be no more sin in our lives, no more rebellion, no more wanting to serve you on the one hand and yet going after our own way on the other hand. Heal up our double-mindedness, our double-mindedness, Lord. And give us that wonderful prayer, the garden prayer of Jesus. Not our will, but your will be done. So in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, what of our, our requests are, Lord? I pray that it would not be our will, but your, your will be done. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope uh, uh, this psalm was able to be opened up to you a little bit more. And uh, so, again, thank you for uh, joining me today. I really enjoy being with you. I miss you. I wish we could do this in person uh, for now. This helps us stay together, stay uh, one body in Christ. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Again, prepare for communion. Uh, and now I close with Jude 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.